In this video, I will analyze the molecular orbital diagrams of boron-2, carbon-2, and nitrogen-2. The electron configuration of the boron atom is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. And the carbon has one more electron than boron. Nitrogen has one more electron than carbon. Let's look at boron-2 first. If we look at the 1s atomic orbitals of the two boron atoms, they can form 1 sigma g bonding orbital and a 1 sigma u star antibonding orbital. The bond order is 0. Over here, 2s orbital, 2s orbital, they can form 2 sigma g and 2 sigma u star. And again, the bond order of these four electrons is also 0. Again, to compute the bond order, you need to have the bonding uh, electrons 2 minus the number of antibonding electrons, which is also 2, and then divided by 2. So you have 2 minus 2, you get 0, 0 divided by 2, you get 0. The bond order here is 0, the bond order here is 0. Now let's look at the more interesting 2p atomic orbitals. We have 3 on the left-hand side, 3 on the right-hand side. Out of this 6 atomic orbitals, we can make 6 molecular orbitals. So what's the lowest energy level orbitals? They are 2 degenerate pi u bonding orbitals. These two are bonding orbitals, pi type bonding orbitals. The symmetry is u symmetry. And then you put the two electrons here and there. Uh, they have the uh, same spin due to the Hans rule. And because of this, boron 2 is paramagnetic. If we look at the uh, bond order of boron 2, we have two bonding electrons here, zero anti bonding electrons over here, therefore the bond order is 1. Uh, what if you have carbon 2? When you have carbon 2, you have 4 p electrons. And you need to put 2 electrons here and 2 electrons here. So therefore, these 2 electrons, uh, just imagine you have alpha and a beta electrons here. They are paired. And over here, you also have 1 alpha and 1 beta electron over here. Therefore, uh, there is no unpaired electron and carbon 2 is diamagnetic. And the bond order of carbon 2 is 4 divided by 2 uh, equals 2. So again, the bond order of carbon 2 is 2. You have two pi bonds in carbon 2. How about nitrogen 2? When you have nitrogen 2, you have 3 p electrons here and another 3 p electrons here. And then in total, you have 6 p electrons. Now you put those 6 electrons into the molecular orbitals. So 2 here, 2 here, 2 here. All 6 electrons. Six electrons are paired. And you have alpha, beta, alpha, beta, alpha, beta. So nitrogen 2 is also diamagnetic. And the bond order of nitrogen 2 is 3. So now let's look at the uh, energy levels. In this uh, boron 2, carbon 2, nitrogen 2, the lowest energy level here, this is uh, 1 pi u, degenerate 1 pi u bonding orbitals. And then this is 3 sigma g bonding orbital. And these two are... Uh, 1 pi g star antibody orbitals. This one is 3 sigma u star antibody orbital. And this MO diagram looks different from the MO diagrams of O2 and F2. For O2 and F2, you have this 3 sigma g body orbital lying below this uh, uh, 1 pi u body orbitals. So why in B2, C2, and N2, this sigma is lying above the 1 pi u bonding orbitals? There's a reason. It's called SP mixing. So really, these two are sigma star and sigma. These two are sigma star and sigma. So this sigma and this sigma, they have the same symmetry. Therefore, this sigma can mix with this sigma. And the mixing of these two molecular orbitals may push the higher energy MO even higher and the lower energy MO even lower. So that's why in B2, C2, N2, this guy is pushed higher. So now this uh, sigma G lies higher than the 1 pi u orbitals. And also this uh, uh, 3 sigma G, uh, I'm sorry, 3 sigma U star is also pushed higher. But anyway, it does not affect the relative order between sigma uh, star and pi star. So there's uh, uh, no change in the, uh, the relative energy between these two. Uh, and uh, these two, uh, you see a significant change uh, from O2, F2 to B2, C2, N2. 
But you may wonder, why do we observe such a uh, dramatic change uh, in B2C2 and N2, but not so much in O2 and F2? Actually, in B2C2 and N2, the effective nuclear charge felt by the 2s electron and the 2p electrons are relatively close to each other. Therefore, the uh, energy of this MO and the energy of this MO are relatively close to each other. And in quantum mechanics, two molecular orbitals uh, interact stronger when they have similar energy. So in B2, C2, N2, this 3 sigma G and this 2 sigma G interact stronger than that uh, in uh, O2 uh, or F2. So therefore, we have this 3 sigma G being pushed up much more significantly in B2, C2, and N2, and, and then which results in this 3 sigma G uh, lying above this 1 pi U bonding orbital. In O2 and F2 cases, the energy difference between the 2s electrons and 2p electrons are very significant. That means this 3 sigma g lies uh, much higher than 2 sigma g. In this case, this 2 sigma g bonding orbital and the 3 sigma g bonding orbital have quite different energies, and they do not interact with each other. So uh, in O2 and F2, this 3 sigma g bonding orbital lies below the 1 pi u degenerate orbitals. All right, in summary, the bond order of B2, C2, and N2 are 1, 2, and 3, respectively. Uh, boron 2 is paramagnetic because of these two alpha electrons. Carbon 2 and nitrogen 2 are diamagnetic with all electrons being paired.